on the degrees of ascension to God and the beholding of him through his footsteps in the universe. Excerpt from The Soul's Progress in God by St. Bonaventure, 1221-1274 to Translated by Thomas Davidson This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valleys of weeping, they make it a place of springs. Psalm 84, 4-6 through six. Since bliss is not but the enjoyment of the supreme good, and the supreme good is above us, no one can become blessed unless he ascend above himself, with ascension not of the body, but of the heart. But we cannot be lifted above ourselves, save through the higher power lifting us up. For however much our inward steps may be ordered, nothing is done unless divine aid accompany but divine aid accompanies those who ask it from the heart, humbly and devoutly, and this is to sigh for it in this veil of tears, which is done by fervent prayer. Prayer, therefore, is the mother and source of uprising to God, wherefore Dionysius, in his mystic theology, wishing to instruct us in the way to attain mental transports, sets down prayer as the first step. Let us each therefore pray and say to our Lord God, Lead me, O Lord, in thy way, and I will walk in thy truth. Let my heart rejoice to fear thee. Psalm 86, verse 11. In praying this prayer, we are illuminated to know the steps of ascension to God. For inasmuch as in our present condition, this universe of things is a stair whereby we may ascend to God and since among these things some are his footprints some his image some corporeal some spiritual some temporal some eternal and hence some outside of us and some inside in order that we may attain to the consideration of the first principle which is altogether spiritual eternal and above us we must pass through the footsteps which are corporeal temporal and outside of us and this is to be led in the way of god john fourteen verse six we must also enter into our own minds which are the image of god eternal spiritual and within us and this is to enter into the truth of god we must also rise aloft to the eternal which is purely spiritual and above us by looking at the first principle and this is to rejoice in the knowledge of god and in reverence for his majesty this then is the three days journey in the wilderness this is the threefold illumination of one day the first is in the evening the second as the morning and the third as noonday this has regard to the threefold existence of things that is in matter in intelligence and in the divine art as it is written let there be made he made and it was made genesis one verses two and three this also has regard to the triple substance of christ who is our stair that is the corporeal the spiritual and the divine according to this triple progress our minds have three principal outlooks the first is toward corporeal things without and with reference to this it is called animality or sensuality the second is directed inward upon and into itself and with reference to this it is called spirit the third is directed upward above itself and in reference to this it is called mind with all these it must dispose itself to ascend to god that it may love him with the whole mind the whole heart and the whole soul in which consist at once perfect observance of the law and christian wisdom but since every one of the aforesaid modes is doubled according as we come to consider god as alpha and as omega or according as we come to see god in each of the above modes through a glass and in a glass 
or because each of these considerations has to be commingled with the other that is joined to it and also to be considered in its purity so it is necessary that these three grades should rise to the number of six whence as god finished the universal world in six days and rested on the seventh so the smaller world is led in the most orderly way by six successive grades of illumination to the rest of contemplation typical of this are the six steps leading to the throne of solomon first kings ten verse nineteen the six winged seraphim which isaiah saw isaiah six verse two the six days after which god called moses from the midst of the darkness exodus twenty four verse sixteen the six days after which we read in matthew christ led his disciples up into a mountain and was transfigured before them matthew seventeen verse one corresponding therefore to the six grades of ascension into god are the six grades of the powers of the soul whereby we ascend from the lowest to the highest from the external to the most internal from the temporal to the eternal namely sense imagination reason intellect intelligence and the apex of the mind or the spark of synteresis footnote synteresis is usually written synderesis gerson's definition is an appetitive faculty of the soul receiving from god a natural inclination to the good a natural stimulus to the good thomas aquinas defines it thus synteresis is not a kind of special power higher than the reason like nature but a kind of natural possession of principles of practice just as the intellect is a possession of principles of theory and not any kind of power End footnote. these grades are implanted in us by nature deformed by sin reformed by grace to be purged by justice exercised by knowledge perfected by wisdom for according to the first institution of nature man was created fit for the quiet of contemplation and for this reason god placed him in a paradise of delights but turning away from the true light to mutable good he himself was made crooked through his own fault and his whole race through original sin which infected human nature in two ways the mind with ignorance and the flesh with concupiscence so that man blinded and bowed down sits in darkness and sees not the light of heaven unless he be aided by grace with justice against concupiscence and by knowledge with wisdom against ignorance all this is done through jesus christ who for us was made wisdom from god and justice and sanctification and redemption first corinthians one verse thirty he being the power and wisdom of god the incarnate word full of grace and truth made grace and truth to wit he infused the grace of charity which when it comes of a pure heart and good conscience and faith unfeigned first timothy one verse five rectifies the whole soul in its threefold outlook above mentioned he also taught the knowledge of truth according to the three modes of theology that is symbolic proper and mystical so that through symbolic theology we might rightly use sensible things through theology proper intelligible things and through mystical theology might be caught up into supermental ecstasies whoever therefore would ascend to god must avoid deforming sin and exercise the above-named natural powers with a view to reforming grace and this by prayer with a view to purifying justice and this in conversation with a view to illuminating science and this in meditation with a view to perfecting wisdom and this in contemplation therefore 
even as no one comes to wisdom save through grace justice and knowledge so no one comes to contemplation save by clear meditation holy conversation and devout prayer as grace therefore is the foundation of rightness of will and of the clear illumination of reason so we must first pray then live holily and thirdly attend to the manifestations of truth and so attending we must gradually rise till we reach the high mountain where the god of gods is seen in zion and since we must ascend jacob's ladder before we descend let us place the first step in the ascent at the bottom holding up this whole sensible world before us as a mirror through which we may rise to god the supreme artificer that we may be true hebrews passing forth from egypt to the land promised to our fathers also that we may be christians passing forth with christ from this world to the father and that we may be lovers of wisdom that calleth and saith come unto me all ye that desire me and be ye filled with mine offspring Sirach, twenty four verse twenty for from the greatness and beauty of created things their creator may be seen and known wisdom thirteen verse five the supreme power wisdom and benevolence of the creator is reflected in all created things as is reported in threefold fashion by the sense of the flesh to the interior sense for the sense of the flesh lends itself to the intellect when it investigates with reason believes with faith or contemplates with intellect in contemplating it considers the actual existence of things in believing their habitual course in reasoning their potential pre-excellence the first point of view which is that of contemplation considering things in themselves sees in them weight number and measure weight which marks the point to which they tend number whereby they are distinguished measure whereby they are limited and hereby it sees in them mode species order as well as substance virtue and action from which it may arise as from footsteps to understand the power wisdom and boundless goodness of the creator the second point of view which is that of faith considering this world attends to its origin course and termination for by faith we believe that the ages were arranged by the word of life hebrews eleven verse three by faith we believe that the epochs of the three laws the law of nature the law of scripture and the law of grace succeed each other and have elapsed in the most perfect order by faith we believe that the world will be terminated by a final judgment in the first we observe the power in the second the providence in the third the justice of the supreme principle the third point of view that of reason investigating sees that some things are only and some are and live only whereas some are live and discern and that the first are inferior the second middle the third superior it sees likewise that some are only corporeal and some partly corporeal partly spiritual whence it concludes that there are some purely spiritual as better and worthier than either it sees moreover that some are mutable and corruptible as terrestrial things others mutable and incorruptible as celestial things whence it concludes that some are immutable and incorruptible as super celestial things from these visible things therefore it rises to consider god's power wisdom and goodness as being living and intelligent as purely spiritual incorruptible and intransmutable this consideration again is extended according to the sevenfold condition of created things which is the sevenfold witness of the divine power wisdom and goodness if we consider the origin magnitude multitude beauty plentitude action and order of all things 
for the origin of things in respect to creation distinction and adornment as far as the works of the six days are concerned proclaims the divine power producing all things from nothing the divine wisdom as clearly distinguishing all things the divine goodness as generously adorning all things the magnitude of things in respect to the bulk of length breadth and depth in respect to the excellence of the power extending itself in length breadth and depth as is manifest in the diffusion of light in respect to the efficacy of action intimate continuous and diffused as is manifested in the action of fire clearly indicates the immensity of the power wisdom and goodness of the threefold god who exists uncircumscribed in all created things through power presence and essence the multitude of things in respect to their diversity general special and individual in substance in form or figure and in efficacy beyond all human estimation manifestly involves and displays the immensity of the three above named conditions in god the beauty of things in respect to the variety of lights figures and colors in bodies simple mixed and organized as in the heavenly bodies and minerals as in stones and metals plants and animals plainly proclaims the above three things the plentitude of things in that matter is full of forms in respect to seminal reasons form is full of virtue as to active power and virtue is full of effects as to efficiency manifestly declares this same thing action manifold according as it is natural artificial or moral by its most manifold variety shows the immensity of that power art and goodness which indeed is to all things the cause of being the ground of understanding and the order of living order in the respect to the ratio of duration situation and influence that is to sooner or later higher or lower nobler or baser in the book of creation clearly manifests the primacy sublimity and divinity of the first principle in regard to infinity of power while the order of the divine laws precepts and judgments in the book of scripture manifests the immensity of his wisdom and the order of the divine sacraments benefits and retributions in the body of the church manifests the immensity of his goodness so that order itself most evidently leads us by the hand to that which is first and highest mightiest and wisest and best he therefore who is not enlightened by all these splendors of created things is blind he who is not waked by such callings is deaf he who from all these effects does not praise god is dumb he who after such intimation does not observe the first principle is foolish open therefore thine eyes draw near thy spiritual ears unseal thy lips and apply thy heart that in all created things thou mayest see hear praise love magnify and honor god lest peradventure the universal frame of things should rise up against thee yea for this the universe will fight against them that are without senses whereas to them that have senses it will be a matter of glory who can say with the prophet thou lord hast made me glad through thy work i will triumph in the works of thy hands psalm ninety two verse four o lord how manifold are thy works in wisdom thou hast made them all the earth is full of thy riches psalm fifty four verse twenty four and of on the degrees of ascension to god and the beholding of him through his footsteps in the universe excerpt from the soul's progress in god by saint bonaventure 
1221 to 1274 translated by thomas davidson